while I was filming, I noticed the freeway started to sag. It started bending the metal. You heard the crackling, the burning, the roaring out of flames. When the tanker truck crashed on southbound I-880, more than 7,000 gallons of gasoline burst into flames and fueled a torch that began roasting the connector overhead. Caltrans engineers say the temperatures probably reached 2,000 degrees. When it went down, it was just incredible to see something like that fall. And then reality starts to sit in like, oh man, what tomorrow commute? You know, how are we gonna get back and forth? This is gonna be pretty much a nightmare. On Sunday, April 29th, at 3.42 in the morning, a tanker truck carrying 8,600 gallons of uh, gasoline was trying to negotiate the I-880 connector south through the MacArthur maze and ended up uh, toppling over and the load caught on fire. Being able to recognize exactly what it was was difficult because the section of the freeway had already collapsed. So we knew that it was some type of flammable liquid involved because of the temperatures and the flame. And it happened at a very unique spot in the roadway because it was directly under the uh, eastbound 580 ramp. The fire was extremely intense and within 12 minutes, the uh, steel supporting the uh, upper ramp, the 580 ramp, began to buckle. The resulting fire was so hot that it turned the steel in the ramp above into a big blanket. It just folded and draped on the ramp below. We were looking at a completely severed ramp, the 580 ramp, the upper ramp, and damage, uh, significant damage to the lower ramp, the I-880 ramp. To see this piece of road just melted and blackened and charred, and the, the leftovers of the truck down to a bumper and a drive shaft, it was amazing. It was uh, surreal. It was like a Dr. Seuss scene. When we left the scene, the only thing that we could recognize was the imprint of where the truck was. The truck was totally decimated. One of the really amazing aspects of the story was that here's a guy driving a gasoline tanker, crashes it on this overpass, and walks away from this burning gasoline tanker that ends up destroying this freeway ramp, and then walks over to a gas station and calls a cab to go to the hospital. I mean, I mean it was really a miracle that no one was killed in this thing. There were no fatalities, but the first casualty is traffic flow. More than a quarter million cars go through the maze daily. 160,000 of them squeeze through the connectors that collapsed or got buried in the flames. Transit operators are making plans for what they term worst case scenarios. When people heard that the maze was shut down, everybody panicked. Everybody thought, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to get to work. It's going to be gridlock. And I was perfectly prepared for all hell to break loose. Caltrans estimated that it was going to take months to fix this thing. Right after it happened, there were a lot of questions. What's the damage? What's going to be the impact? How long is it going to take to get this open? And, you know, certainly immediately following the accident, we couldn't make that determination. But we did tell people that uh, we were going to get this facility open as quickly as possible. There's lots of conjecture about how long it was going to take to fix it. All these cost estimates came out, and people really thought the worst when they first heard it, that this was going to be something where people were going to have to get used to detouring for months and months on end. The MacArthur Maze is very important to the Bay Area. It's where three different freeways come together and feed to the Bay Bridge, from the Bay Bridge, to points south, east, and north. 
We immediately established detour routes, worked with the City of Oakland so that traffic could be detoured on city streets, and got the word out that was so critical in this project to let people know to take alternate routes to carpool, to take transit. Commuters are a remarkable lot. They adjust remarkably well. A lot of people use BART, BART ridership uh, shot way up, which is always a good thing. People adjusted, people went in later, they went in earlier. Traffic did not come to the massive, snarling, grinding halt that so many people predicted would happen. Sunday, I was one of the first people out here looking at the bridge, and our first activity was to take a quick oversight of the whole area. Looking underneath the bridge, looking up at the collapse pieces, trying to figure out how secure the area was. My initial reaction was, how are we going to safely remove the debris from the collapse span? It looked like a major undertaking. The first meetings that we had here at Caltrans were very intense and very productive, making sure we had transit coordination, making sure we had emergency response, making sure we had all of the experts here. We were setting up websites and transit information. The governor flew up from LA that night. He announced an emergency declaration, which allowed us to get in there and start doing contracting immediately. When Governor Schwarzenegger declared an emergency proclamation, it allowed for Caltrans to move very quickly through awarding the bid process. They were given waivers from certain federal and state regulations that would have tied them up. So it did actually speed up the process considerably by allowing the red tape and a lot of that bureaucracy to be set aside. We were able to get a demolition contractor on board to begin the work of taking down the ramp that had collapsed onto the lower ramp. When we completed the demolition of the shattered upper deck, which uh, took us about 24 hours, we were then able to get the contractor looking at the damage uh, sustained on the lower ramp. We wanted to make sure that the uh, concrete and the rebar within the concrete was still solid. We were able to determine fairly quickly that we could save that uh, ramp, we would not have to replace it. The steel girders underneath the I-880, the lower structure, while bent, could be straightened. The contractor, ACC West Coast, got that piece of the damage repaired within eight days. We were pursuing a separate process to bring a contractor on board to repair the upper ramp. We were able to get a design uh, put together very, very quickly. In order to expedite the design, to get it done quickly, the design crews essentially took the as-built drawings and recreated them. However, they also improved them significantly. They used, of course, the, the latest codes, and they powered right through it, working several days and several nights to produce an actual bid package the contractors could bid on. Literally within five or six days following the accident, we were advertising the contract for construction. Our estimate of the time it would take to complete the replacement of the upper deck was about uh, 50 days, 50 calendar days. And we felt that any time frame that would beat that target up to a maximum of a $5 million bonus would be worth it from a standpoint of the benefits to the public. The benefit of an incentive-based contract in a situation like this is that you're going to get some very creative thinking. We made a decision to talk directly to contractors who we think could handle this kind of job. So we made an invitation to bid. We talked to about 10 different contractors. The initial thought was, there's not enough steel. And so there was a bit of a panic. I arrived at work about 8 o'clock in the morning here at Stinger. On that Monday morning, the telephone rang. It was Caltrans asking if Stinger was interested in repairing the girders that had collapsed and I had explained to the guy that I'd seen it on TV and that sure we were interested, uh, tell us what the details are and we'd be glad to look into it. The steel suppliers assured us that yes, we do have steel. We sent a fax out basically saying that we were ready, willing and able to produce these I-beams. We sent that fax to every contractor that was going to be bidding the project. I come to work and there's a fax there from Stinger Steel out of Arizona. I don't know who Stinger Steel is, right? But it was very interesting. He says, um, I want $3 a pound for the steel, and I want 25% of the bonus. 
we had several contractors call us and laugh at us and say we were crazy and that they weren't going to participate in paying us a bonus. They just wanted a, a hard dollar bid from us. I've never had a proposal sent to me in my whole life like that. So I called the guy. First of all, I'm, I'm, who are you? Who the hell are you? Mr. Myers asked me basically who we were, and I believe he made one phone call and called me back within three or four minutes and says, hey, look, we're going to deal with you. Let's go. I said, I know I can make that bonus, and you're one twenty-five percent of that. I don't have a problem with that. I actually don't have a problem with that. I want this thing built in record time. I said, do you have the material? Do you know where the material is? We made calls around the country, back in Pennsylvania, Texas, even here locally, California coast, to see where the plate was, and we lined it all up. But he says, the problem we're going to have is getting the steel shop drawings approved. I said, no, you don't have no problem with the shop drawings. If we're a little better, you gotta get on immediately. We received uh, bids by the following Monday, a little over a week from when the accident occurred. Opened uh, bids at 10 o'clock in the morning. Construction company C.C. Myers was the low bidder at $867,000. It was C.C. Myers only bid $867,000 because he was banking on the fact that he could get that maximum incentive of $200,000 a day. $867,000, it was just, you know, unheard of. And you could only conclude from that that this guy had assumed that he was going to collect that entire $5 million bonus. About a quarter after 10, we find out we're a little bitter. So I called Douglas back. I said, order that steel immediately. I take all responsibility. Then get your shop drawings done now. It was basically a handshake over the telephone agreement that we would get started. And I quickly assembled our team here at Stinger and started procuring the material so that we could start producing these girders. Within 15 minutes of the contract award, he had his people on site beginning the work to repair the upper deck. I signed the contract at 3.30. We started at 3 o'clock. I didn't talk too loud about it. I had my people, my equipment, everything there, right? He went on TV that afternoon and said, I'm going to get it done in a third of the time that uh, Caltrans is expecting. My goal was to get that bridge built as fast as possible, especially be done before the Memorial Day holiday weekend for the people of the Bay Area. They suffered enough through 89 back there, still suffering because the Bay Bridge ain't done. The main key of getting that 580 done, the maze, was the steel. So I called the state and I said, we're going to need you in Arizona in a day or two. So the state of California sent four guys to Arizona over to his shop. They sat at a table and they had the shop drawings all done. At the end of the day, they approved the shop drawings. Shop drawings are the detailed working drawings that a fabricator uses to actually fabricate the steel. Typically, shop drawings take weeks to be approved. And this was a matter of a day. Carl Douglas called me and he said, I want to come over and see the job site. I said, well, I'd like to meet you. And we drove down that night. I met him, first time I ever met the guy. And I looked at him and I said, hmm. I said, He's put shorter than me and I said, hmm. You know, I don't know if I like you or not. You may be, you may be as good as me if not better getting the job done fast. He is quite a tall person. He got out of the car and I kind of looked up at him. He looked down at me, and basically he kind of told me, he says, you don't look near as big as you did on the telephone. <laughs> and I explained to him that he had met his match on doing fast work for construction, and he kind of indicated to me he didn't like being told that, but I said, hey, look, we're cut out of the same mold here. These guys just worked seven days a week, more than 12 hours a day in the heat. There's no air conditioning out in the shop to get these done. It was pretty amazing all the time they put in there. Missing Mother's Day was quite a sacrifice. Some mm. of them are still trying to make up for that. But <laughs> they did an amazing job. And the sense of pride was enormous. Getting the steel and having the right fabricator and the state of California's cooperation. And once that part there got done, we just rolling down the road. starts the critical operations that can make or break this project. The vent cap has 
arrived and is in the lane closure, it will be maneuvered to underneath the area where it's going to be lifted. The two cranes will be hooked up to it, and we're going to lift it into place. That's the cap to where the steel girders will tie to. That holds the middle of the bridge. The key tonight is we have to get that bent cap exactly where it belongs because we have steel girders that are going to finish out the span and the tolerances on those are only about an inch. So we will have staff down there at the scaffolding and we will be using laser measurement devices to make sure that we get it in the exact spot it belongs. Once the uh, bent cap's in place, the first two girders follow. The plan is two girders every night thereafter, and that's basically controlled by the rate they're coming in from the fabricator from Arizona. My biggest concern was that when the girders come into place, the bent cap, will it fit right? And the girders, will they fit the distance? And that would have been a major delay if we had a problem with that. I was a little anxious to see how they were going to fit because you never know, you know, you've got a team of people out here cutting and fitting and fabricating, but you never know if it's going to fit until you're there hanging it in the air until that bolt goes in. And a project like this that's so high profile, if the bolts wouldn't have fit, there would have been hell to pay. We had to look like mud on, on the news, I'm sure. Everything fit like a glove, and we really turned on the heat back at the shop, basically to make sure that we could get done before the major holiday that was coming up. Once the girders were set into place, they dropped forms on the bottom flange of the girder all the way the full length of the girders, and that became their working platform. Then they could build the forms up under the top flange where the concrete deck will be placed. I got a call that uh, the last beam is done Friday night, but they won't let you ship out of Arizona on Saturday with a permit load. I called Will Kempton, the director, and I said, we need to get a hold of the highway patrol over in Arizona and get a permit so we can leave and ship on Saturday, the last load on Saturday, right? They come back in about an hour, you got the permit. And we'll pick you up and we'll escort you all the way from Arizona to California. We'll pick the highway patrol and escort you all the way in. So I called Douglas back. I said, get your truck underneath that thing. Let's go. The last two girders were speeding towards California and the trucker had a blowout on one tire. And when they had a blowout, he printer lost the load. So these are some of the risks you take truck wreck or anything like that. That means you start all over. You go back to Pennsylvania, you get the steel, got a fabricated oil, you lose a week. So he took off again. Now he has another blowout on this side of Los Angeles. He gets to Mare Island at nine o'clock Saturday night. He's supposed to be in there that morning. All the people of Mare Island, they're sitting there waiting, right? We were pushing it as far as getting those last two girders into the painting facility and primed. The contractor could only have the 880 connector closed till 9 a.m. on a Sunday. As soon as he gets there, they jerk that thing off and they sandblast and get that thing all primary, right? They set that last beam at 8.30 in the morning. Now they're putting the rebar in, and wow, what happens, man? Huh? They're short rebar. So then they call the terrorist reinforcing. We need some steel. He goes and loads the shop up, loads the truck up with what they were short. I think it was 126 bars up, and they run over the job, right? They get the steel and they start pouring that deck at 4.30. We'll go through a four-day cure. After the four days are done, and once it gets enough strength, we'll place the concrete barrier. After the barrier is in place, and we're confident with tests to verify that we have sufficient strength, we'll open it up to traffic. I don't have concerns about the quality of the materials or the quality of the installation measures because we certainly made sure that all the requirements were met. They use modern materials. They use all the modern grades of steel. So really, the new structure, although it is based on the old design, is actually much safer. Caltrans, like so many other highway agencies, has had something of a reputation of a Roman emperor or a marauding army going into a place, building a highway, basically saying thanks for participating, and then going on and doing whatever they felt like doing.
people's thinking on this started to shift when they saw how fast Caltrans got this thing together. Certainly this was C.C. Myers and Caltrans' finest hour. Working with Caltrans, it makes it very easy. They really jump in and uh, work with us as a team. Everybody has to be on the same team. Everybody has to be focused in the same direction. What our, what our goal is, right? The goal is to get the job done as fast as possible and be safe. C.C. Myers is really known for his ability, to, I think, to get contractors, subcontractors, to uh, come into line. I heard that a lot of the success of the maze reconstruction happening so quickly was the orchestration of those subcontractors. C.C. Myers really cracked the whip, I understand, in getting those subcontractors to work in tightly uh, orchestrated fashion to get that done. The whole plant was in awe of how fast they were getting stuff going. Night and day, guys work 24-7 getting stuff done, bringing stuff in. I mean, it was incredible how these guys were on the ball, inspectors always walking around. I couldn't believe how fast it got put together. They did a great job. Normally, you don't get a cheer and a thumbs up. You get a single digit finger when they're driving by. But with this project, uh, people were pretty pleased and supportive. They'd honk when they'd drive under got to give the most respect to the guys out there, the actual pile butts or carpenters out there, or the welders that are out there welding that stuff for hours on end, hours on end. These are some photos we took of the girders loaded on a truck. One of our guys wrote a little message on one of these girders to the people of Oakland, California from Stinger Welding, Kula Jay-Z. We got phone calls, we got cards. It was really neat, we got a lot of thank yous. After the maze reconstruction project happened so quickly and so smoothly, and even with the bonus handed out to C.C. Myers, I think Caltrans did share in that glory, so to speak. It was very hard to find fault or poke holes in this because it wasn't like the Bay Bridge, which is decades late, and it wasn't billions over budget. Uh, you know, here's a guy who came in, did it faster than anyone, perhaps even he thought he could do it, and did it as cheaply as Caltrans had estimated. Is C.C. Myers a folk legend? Well, as public works projects go, I would have to say yes. He's quite a larger than life character, and most of us knew that he was responsible for rebuilding portions of the Santa Monica Freeway in 66 days after the Northridge quake. And that project is held up as an example up and down the state. You look at what he did at Northridge, look at what he did here in Oakland, and if you look at what he's doing right now out on the Bay Bridge, he kicks ass. When there's an emergency in the state or the people need us, we're there, we'll do the job. I got wonderful people work for me. I wouldn't trade them for anybody else's people. And look at our workmanship, it's top of the line. We don't cut any corners that way at all. And safety, like it's safety number one. We maintain the strict oversight of all of the contractors that were involved. The safety is our number one priority, and we wanted to make sure that this facility was going to be safe once we got it open to traffic. Mr. Myers himself called and invited me to come up on the opening, the grand opening, where the governor was going to be there. He said it was necessary that I was there. This is a perfect example of the government has really shown its best side. Because of everyone working together, we have come in with this project 32 days quicker than expected and on the budget. The governor doesn't look near as big as he does on TV. <laughs> he didn't at all. All of these news videos of all these elected officials down there on that site climbing all over themselves trying to take credit for it being done early. They must have had to have a reservation list for who was going to be on site to kick the cameras in there and have that maze in the background, see I'm down here important, I'm doing something about this maze reconstruction project. I had to laugh a few times looking at that, some of these local officials who have absolutely squat to do with state transportation policy or money, and they're down there with the, you know, the TV cameras. Caltrans halted traffic just east of the Bay Bridge. Crews needed the lanes clear to pick up cones and any remaining signs. It backed up traffic, but at 8.39 p.m., cars were moving once again. The 580 connector reopened well ahead of schedule. 
from the day that they finished the maze project, it became the new paradigm for getting things done. People started saying, well, why can't we do this with the Bay Bridge? Why can't we give a bonus to the legislature to get the budget done on time? Maybe we won't be waiting so long for everything. <laughs>